good morning. Last night I had myself an egg curry. It was very nice. Today my wife might be in for a couple of sulfur surprises. Hello Stan. Yes, Project Stan. We may as well call this car Project Stan, haven't we? I bought Stan a little while back as a head gasket failure car. And I brought it back here. I did a couple of things and decided it hadn't had a head gasket failure at all. And then I got it MLT'd, taxed it, and then I found out that it most definitely has got a head gasket failure. So today, Project Stan is going on the back of my truck and going over to Mosley, where there's a place called Roba Revival. And there's a, a rather special man there who will take care of it. I bought this car as a head gasket failure, um, but it was supposed to be off a nice gentleman in Stockport, but I haven't spoke to him on the phone, found it also quite good, he'd looked after and everything, he then sold it to somebody else in the morning, a couple of young lads, but he was quite happy because he was quite sure that he was going to look after it, but then only a couple of days later it was back up for sale for quite a lot more. And I asked him to message the seller and say, oh, we fix the head gasket then. And he said, no, there's nothing wrong with the head gasket, mate. So I was trying to make arrangements to go and see it and he couldn't tell me the address. And I thought that was a bit strange. How come he didn't know his own address? And he told me, oh no, it's not on my home. I left it in Altrincham. Um, no, I left, it, I left it somewhere in Manchester because I forgot that I couldn't drive which was a rather special bit of information obviously that was a bit of a surprise later on he told me that he'd not driven a car for years he's just been on bikes but even so i mean how far do you go before you realize you can't actually drive a car i'll tell you how far probably far enough for it to overheat because you hadn't actually looked after the coolant and it's so he'd left it outside someone's house about 10 miles away from his home and i arranged to meet him and he turned up with his girlfriend and in the back of the car were sleeping bags. And he told me the night before, oh, we just thought we'd pop down here and get stoned and sleep in the back of the car, outside somebody else's house. As this car is uh, in old English white and clearly a very, very early model 25 and tidy enough, uh, it's, it's just about worthwhile saving on a head gasket. It does have a few of the usual rusty scabs on it and that wing's got a dent on it. And there's a bit there as well, which I forgot about. And around this side, that wing's a bit scabby in places, but it's solid underneath as they invariably are.
have you. Uh, Craig's a really good guy, he really knows what he's doing uh, with the uh, Rover K series engines and indeed other cars as well. Uh, but it's difficult to get away with, I was in chatting for about half an hour or so. And uh, because he's so knowledgeable, I usually end up asking him a bunch of questions. But then, invariably, I forget what the answers was as well. I need to get him to write things down for me, I think. Fancy a chippy dinner today actually, that'd be rather nice. The only thing is I end up with my beard smelling of fish afterwards. It's time to take the 216 for a little test drive. I'll let you know if it's any good, I'm sure it will be. I couldn't film the drive though because my uh, phone holder for the windscreen is in the other car. The question is, is it any good? Well, it's time to climb into the custard missile and go home, I guess. I forgot to answer that question that I asked before about whether the 216 is any good or not. I got back in and got distracted, eating cups of tea and drinking biscuits, and then I spoke to some oily men next door called mechanics and forgot all about it. So, is it any good? Yes, it is. Very good.